Well, today we're in Washington, D.C., in the, uh, the headquarters of the Atlas Economic Research Foundation. I'm with uh, Brad Lips. How are you today, Brad? Good to see you, Jason. Uh, full disclosure, Brad is my boss, and, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, the Atlas Foundation is a, a, a proud sponsor, or we're proud to have them as a sponsor of the Motorhome Diaries, and I don't know how we could have done this without your support. So. Oh, it's great. It's, it's been fun to see the project evolve and uh, watch all the adventures along the road, and I'm very privileged to be a, a part of this. Now. Thank, thanks very much, Brad. It's, it, it's been great. How did you get here, I guess, is my first question. Um, I mean, what made you believe in, uh, in free markets and uh, want to uh, dedicate your career to that? Yeah, it, it's interesting because um, yeah, the way it's wound up, um, and some people in the movement know that uh, my, my family has become sort of um, uh, movement groupies. My uh, brother's been at, at Cato and now at Heritage, and my sister at IWF, and my, my uncle is really the one that started feeding us libertarian uh, works when we were in, in high school, and I was uh, profoundly uninterested. My, my uncle David Liss was at Liberty Fund. Uh, he was one of the first um, uh, Cato interns, uh, the same class that Tom Palmer was a part of. I had no idea. And, um, and he tried his best, but, um, but it really, uh, I had to stray and become sort of a typical Princeton socialist. Um, very fashionable that way. Um, before I, I came back and started to work in the real world, I was working on Wall Street for a couple of years when I really became interested in public policy ideas and what I was reading in the Wall Street Journal every day and then discovered uh, Rand and then all the books that my uncle had been feeding me for a long time, you know, from Bastiat and Mises and Hayek. So, um, so that's when I packed my bags and decided to uh, make the move to the DC policy world. The role of Atlas is to play sort of a catalyst and connector role to strengthen the worldwide free market movement. Um, what that doesn't mean is that Atlas is um, publishing and favoring you know, one brand of, of education reform. Um, you know, we have friends that believe in charter schools as a nice incremental reform and then others doing the full separation of school and state argument and we think it's wonderful to have people working along all those different avenues to move things at least in the right direction. Um, and Atlas as an institution believes that intellectual entrepreneurs, like the people that really have the, the vision and the, and the dream and the talent to advance those ideas, um, you know, they're the ones that ultimately have to be the most energetic and our role is to find a ways to support them. But when you see our networking meetings and our training sessions, um, you really get a sense of this, uh, the, the power that comes from uh, helping convene this network of free market think tanks um, that in, in all different cultures and settings are trying to advance the same idea. It's yeah. better to have a really broad chorus of people singing the same tune than to have you know, a couple outstanding soloists. Yeah. So they, they trust us to, um, to find the, the most promising startups and then to give you know, small amounts of money uh, typically, um, but usually with a little bit of, of helping hand and, and guidance and mentoring. Yeah, awesome. So the free market has been taking a hit um, from, of course, the Bush administration and now the Obama administration mm -hmm. has put that into a high gear. What do you think the free market movement is right now? Um, let's see, it's, it's definitely a, a time where I think it's pretty fashionable to be pessimistic, but, um, uh, but I do like to really think of this as, as our opportunity. Um, uh, lots of things went wrong under Bush and we're certainly seeing an acceleration further towards, uh, towards big government. And, um, and to me, uh, you know, I, I don't really know my Vladimir Lenin, but I think there was a phrase in there, like heightened the contradictions, where he expected that the real revolution would happen when, um, uh, when things were really bad. I think that we have uh, that type of opportunity where people are waking up to things that it was tough for them to react to before. They, you know, the, the cause of liberty wasn't um, in their lives and it wasn't important to them, but now they're waking up and I think that we have a really good chance to make our, our case. Um, so it's an exciting time, I think, to be involved in the movement and to be trying to um, you know, advance policy priorities, but, but also the type of thing you're doing, um, using all the amazing new media innovations to connect people in ways that weren't possible five years ago or ten years ago. It's just, it takes all types of approaches, and I uh, appreciate you doing what you're doing and your support for Motorhome Diaries, Brad. Indeed. Thanks, Jason.